Thank you, Professor Stancil and the faculty of NJ State University. When I was here, it was just the electrical engineering department. But now that it's electrical and computer, I want to talk to all and share to this day an honor for all of you for the work which has brought you here successfully. And for you professors who gave your gift of your knowledge to transport, I mean, to, throughout these years, that is, I think, a gift that everyone's going to cherish forever and ever. And also welcome parents, friends, and family. So congratulations for many years of hard work. You did it. I am Deborah Proctor, Chief of News Year and GM from WCPE, the Classical Station. And you probably listened to our station once or twice when you're staying up late for exams. We began broadcasting way back when I decided that I was going to devote my life to broadcasting, and that was back in 1973. My degree is in electrical engineering, and like I said, it was just the EE department back then. For you computer grads, that was the dark ages. We still used punch cards, and DARPA, which became the internet, was a secret to me, at least. It was still years before I would see a five megabyte hard drive, and I thought it was a big deal when I got two 10 meg drives and an IBM standalone Model XP on the cabinet with two inch, or with two rather five inch floppies, by the way. They were double sided and they held 360 KB. And I recall hearing someone say that anyone who needed more than 640 KB of RAM couldn't write very compact programs. Fortunately, back then, I took some extra courses that helped me in my career accounting, physics, and all the chemistry I could get in, and quite frankly, I pulled up my grades with chemistry. Um, ME came in pretty well, too. And dealing with megawatts and high-power RF, which can arc half a foot without a problem, um, different material properties came into play, dissimilar metals exposed to elements, loved to corrode. Sea salt spray at the top of quarter mile tall tower doesn't help things either anyway. And when you have got a three inch ice coat on everything from the top and bottom, the base load goes from a million pounds to well over 12 million. And when we have a hurricane that we don't even feel the winds here, we still hear the winds on top of that thing because they come in unattenuated. And having some ME makes me help a l sleep a little bit better at night. Now, one of my ME professors had a rule. You got either an A-plus or you got an F. It was his opinion, and now mine, that the bridge you designed either is going to stand up or it's going to fall down. At the power levers I work with, that professor is still on target as far as I'm concerned. When you step up the high voltage coming in from the power lines, things get really damages. At those high voltages, there's no between. You either get an A or you get an F, and you better know about arc flash hazards. That's especially for you people going into uh, uh, electrical work with a power company. My first real job really was television. I probably played Saturday morning cartoons for some of your parents, and most were in color. We used a two and a half megawatt transmitter. One day it goes off the air. So I jump in my car, take off to the transmitter about 15 minutes away, Turns out the company VP wanted to see what was inside that little room. And that little room was bigger than the average size office. And the power supply for that machine ran at 18.4 kV. The access door instantly shorted out power supply when anyone accidentally opened it to produce, uh, protect life and safety. So that thing had an arc blast brilliance of around 6,000 joules in a few microseconds. And you can imagine what that thing sounded like right above his head. He could not hear or see for about five minutes. So by the time I got there, he was still shook up and okay. I sat him down, reset all the overloads, got ourselves back on the air. Every, every AC and DC overload kicked out. And for some reason, he never went back up there again. Now, years later, I wanted to start a radio station. There were a dozen of pros who told me it was impossible. First, we had no money, no studio equipment, no good frequencies, no experience, and I quietly smiled at that one. But it was something I already wanted, and I did not listen to their no's. 
WCP started in increments. Like we said, I've built most of the equipment, probably all of it from government surplus. And this is where your different knowledge of chemistry, physics, and everything comes in because I knew how to etch the copper circuit boards without even thinking about it. So building the first transmitter too, we only need to make 12 and a half kW, and I was used to uh, 2,500 kW, so to me this is kind of dinky. But still, I remember the explosion in the way the RCA TV transmitter just simply shorted out supply in the little room. So instead, I had the door handle connected to two, not one, switches. The first switch cut off the power to the 3,000 volt power supply, Brecht fire cabinet. The next switch dropped down the crowbar, which shorted out the power supply, and that went through a one ohm resistor, which kept the surge current down to 1,000 amps. In case that didn't work, we had, I made sure, a rectifier power supply that was big enough to take that surge, 50 amp circuit breaker that was big enough to trip, and heavy enough wire that was big enough to pull the 100 amp breaker on the wall in case the 50 amp breaker hung up because those contacts confused together. So, again, you either get an A plus or you get an F. Now, someone lives or dies, or at least can, by what you anticipate or what you don't anticipate. It's your responsibility to protect lives and livelihood. So I recommend backup capabilities. That's why I got two copies of this thing with me. It's super critical information that you cannot compromise. You can't tell, trust me, I've done this for a long time. Now, when I do super critical work at the radio station, I still use DOS 7. I still use Lotus 123. I still use WordPerfect and I never ever connect it in any way whatsoever to the outside world. People's social security numbers are in there, their financial info's in there. I use three computers, three different locations. I got two hard drives in them each. Darn thing boots in less than a quarter of a second. I mean, just bang, it's up there. It only locks up once or twice a year, if that. However, once I was down to drive number six out of five. In December, when I was doing the W-2s. Believe me, I kissed that sixth hard drive. Because here we were in December, ugh, imagine what would happen. So if you want to ensure something critical stays secure, you have to do it yourself. You can't let someone else supervise it. I can now keep up with Windows, but it's easier for me to write code for DOS, and I use DOS when I can, but I make sure that I do keep up with all the technology. As for backups at the radio station, we promise our listeners great classical music 24 hours a day, period, A plus or F. We have our power automatically switched from three different substations. We have two full-time full prime, full -time prime power diesel service generators. We have two 50 kW transmitters which run together, and we've got a 33K backup which we can turn on. Again, A plus or an F. Now, if we do this just for music, you, may you will be designing, not may, you will. You may be designing new apps where you're designing medical, life support system, software, firmware, something. Always consider how relieved you're gonna feel when you hear that a primary device failed and your secondary device kicked in and saved a life. So, still learning, using DOS a lot, I learned a lesson about keeping up with technology. When I started out in TV, I was with NBC, then CBS, then finally ABC. I learned just about there was everything there was, which what we call the National Television Standards Committee color system. We had other names for it, like Never Twice Same Color, but we didn't worry about that one too much. However, a few years ago, the United States dropped the old NTSC system in form of advanced ATV, digital TV. I didn't keep up with it. So overnight, everything I learned about the old way of doing color TV, which I could make it jump through loops, gone. Don't let that happen to you. We still use uh, NTSC for our security monitors and things like that, but 
That's just because I know how to keep lightning out of it. Another important quality to cling to, always be honest. We moved out to uh, in between Wake Forest and Rollsville where I plan to put our quarter mile tall tower up there. Prior to considering a loan for everything about all of this, the auditors were planning to spend two weeks to go over the books. One of them said he sent us a check a few years ago. About a minute later, I showed him a photocopy of a dollar bill, a banker, $100 bill, the banker sent to us, complete with the serial number plainly visible on the photocopy. They mumbled a few minutes and then said, you got the loan and they walked out. So we did. So one of the important lessons I learned in my career is never give up. I'm proud of the radio station. I'm proud of the classicalstation.org, but it was nearly an F. The FCC sends us a letter of denial for my transmitter and tower plan. Again, like Professor Stancil told you, there is a discrepancy in the rules. It was as if you cross a county line and all of a sudden the turn, trees turn from green to red because they're going from magnesium chlorophyll to iron chlorophyll just because of imaginary line on the ground. So I didn't take no for an answer. It took 10 years to take care of that one. Don't give up. We had 50,000 petition names in Washington. That got Congress interested, including Jesse Helms, who one day sat in the SEC commissioner's office until the commissioner would talk with him. Finally, after 10 years, the FCC took care of that 20 dB discrepancy. And now they even call it the Raleigh Rule. So again, don't let anyone tell you you can't do something. Then comes internet broadcasting. Now my first thought was who's gonna wanna to listen to radio over a computer, but I didn't say that out loud, I just thought it. Now, because of a quirk in the way the internet switching centers were set up, they had a per wire rate on collecting royalties. You in computer grads will know what 256 minus one is, 255. They were gonna charge us 250 times more per listener on the internet than they were over the air. Another end for a quirk in the law. One gun stand for it. One day we even had the Congressional Telephone Office call us up and ask us to hold off on giving over their phone number because we tied up their switchboard. Now this was the last bill actually promoted by Senator Jesse Helms. It took years, but it finally got through. Later, I found out that he honored me in the preface to the bill, and I'm proud of that. And today the classical station is available everywhere. So when you're up at night, make sure your next design's, trying to make sure your next design's gonna be an A plus, you can turn us on anywhere in the world and hear us. Again, don't give up. Now the next thing I wanna tell you, I think is probably the most important. You're already here today with many of your friends. You will go into new and exciting directions tomorrow. Right now you're together to receive well-deserved congratulations. You passed a couple of major hurdles already, you're here. While you have a chance to more easily communicate with people that you care for very much on today's social media, very much easier, more easily than I did 50 years ago, it may be a long time later on tonight or tomorrow before you stand next to certain very special people in your life and you're able to hold your hands and look directly into their eyes. Life is gonna take you into more and more directions than you can possibly imagine. And life does sometimes spin on a dime. I know this one too well. Make sure the people that you appreciate the people here you've come to know, and most important, the most special people in your life, as soon as you can, hold their hand, look them in their eyes, and say the most beautiful words in any language, which are, I love you. 
So congratulations to you, graduating class of 2005, on earning your degrees in two of the most difficult fields that I think there are. I hope one day, even just one of these lessons I've talked about will help you avoid that F and get you or someone you helped an A+. Remember, you make your own good luck. So congratulations, and once more, thank you.